All right, so let's just jump straight into it. Uh, a couple behavior nerds, one in North America, one hanging in New Zealand. We have drastic different uh, responses going on, I think, culturally to what's going on in 2020, um, particularly with the pandemic. Um, what's it been like down there? Like, or do you have questions for me too? Like, I want to see where kind of explore, you know, like what what the response has been from both our perspectives, maybe. Yeah, well. I, I'm lucky in my behavior nerd journey and, and uh, current daily activities to connect with people all around the world. So uh, it's 11 a.m. in the morning here in New Zealand, and you're, you're the second North American I've connected with today. The other one was on in North Carolina, so on the other side of the, the continent. Um, so I, I get to kind of be reminded, uh, and, and as does our media here in New Zealand, remind us. Uh, there's a global pandemic happening out there, everyone. Because yeah. for a hundred, I think New Zealand has the record now for the longest duration of no community transmission. Uh, and I think two weekends ago, I connected with some uh, local behaviour nerds, or five of us, and we played some portal, um, some tabletop uh, shaping yeah. games. Uh, and and I shared a photo in our online community of us playing portal. And, and I was like, this is cool. Everyone's going to be excited. And people were like, oh, nice for some. Like, you can sit there <laughs> so close to each other in a busy cafe. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is a yeah. No, no I've, I've, I've been feeling guilty, like, saying that. Because life here was quite normal for a long time. But um, my friends in Victoria, Australia, are, are recognizing the um, intense nature of this virus to reemerge with a vengeance. Uh, and we're back into our various stages of lockdown in New Zealand due to that very reason mm -hmm. uh, with a strand of coronavirus that originated apparently in Wuhan and we don't know how it got here. <laughs> really? It's it's just mind-blowing. So, you know, we you wake up in the morning, as I know that everyone around the world is familiar with, and um, suddenly it's back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're watching daily updates from the Ministry of Health and whatever yeah. it is for your country. So, yeah, but I mean, other than that, like we, we did enjoy probably uh, something that a majority of the world's population was envious yeah. of. What's, uh, yeah, what's, I mean, is the second is the response right now pretty similar? Like just really tight, quick, swift action to like lockdown, figure out what's going on? <laughs> Yeah, I think you know, one of the headlines I saw the other day was we, we dodged a bullet. Like, we got it so quickly, and then there was uh, a bunch of uh, mistakes and lack of protocol identified in our border. Mm -hmm. uh, and so right up close to an election, as I know you guys are in the States there as well, uh, it, there's a lot of politics being played at the moment with okay. the virus. Uh, and seemingly they've managed to isolate one cluster and shut down like one metro metropolitan area okay. uh, and the rest of the country is kind of in a loose lockdown but it's we're just nervous i guess yeah and then, once again i feel guilty saying that you know? no no <laughs> that's that's uh i mean that's that's a, a sign of empathy and compassion for others i don't like and i think people will be able to recognize that um the it's interesting to me that like it seems that politics transcend borders and it still gets politicized. Um, uh, so you're experiencing some of that down there too. Yeah. It's ugly and it's, yeah. But uh, who do you believe? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. <laughs> um, so much conspiracy theorists in a way online. Yeah. Like. Yeah. It's crazy. Huh? The, uh, what else was I say? Um, so, I guess uh, one thing I'd be curious about kind of selfishly from my perspective would be um, does it seem that culturally like people are pretty open to this idea of like a metropolitan area being locked down like is that a, a difference you think between um, like are people in New Zealand uh, living there like more susceptible to being like okay yeah like we'll we'll do this lockdown or is it a pretty forceful like governmental sort of thing that's like no this is what you're doing does that make sense like how willing people are <laughs> I, I think of our prime minister who daily would, nearly daily would jump on an update and address 
uh, what she framed as a team of five million. Uh, she was good. She's good at communicating and answering questions and being mm-hmm. compassionate, but also being very direct. Then during lockdown, she started her own podcast show where she was talking to people and figuring out how they uh, were dealing with the the current situation. And she was doing Facebook lives and her like sweats at home, you yeah. know, seven o'clock at night to make sure that. So the so the the, tra- the seeming transparency uh, coming from the person in number one seat in our country mm-hmm. uh, was something I haven't experienced before. And then uh, now what's happening is it seems that there's been a disconnect between some of the things that were communicated to the general population and what was actually happening uh, on the ground. And so uh, I think the other political parties are like kind of going, hey, look, you've been lied to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, was <laughs> I being lied to? Uh, and, and obviously... Uh, business has suffered as it is everywhere in the world mm-hmm. uh, and but additionally we've had a length of time now to go wow our unemployment rate wasn't really affected as we thought it was going to be and our economy's now uh, doing better than the majority of the world so yeah there, there are those results uh, that our government have provided for us uh, and so I think right now the culture, the the culture I'm feeling, and this is my personal opinion, is, is we're trusting still, and we're kind of we've got res- we've had results. They've, yeah, they've uh, been beneficial for us as a country and, mm-hmm. and as a team of five million. And uh, you know, the next few months is going to be important. I think. Yeah, definitely. But, right. but we can't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think any country in the world can just continue to do extreme lockdowns indefinitely yeah no it, it has its tools right um so to shift gears slightly like you have a direct line in animal training the whole like a large community of people how is it affecting what you do there with animal training academy or more so like that that community um, yeah that the the uh, <laughs> i remember the, kind of acknowledging what was happening because the a, a silver lining for our lockdown has been that uh, 11 days before New Zealand went into full lockdown our, our baby daughter was born uh, and so she's five months now uh, and so during that time of the, the virus kind of ex- starting to get a little bit of exponential growth in New Zealand uh, we're in hospital, completely disengaged. Yeah, okay. Uh, and and then we got home, and it's like the world had changed. Yeah. And and people were messaging me from our community saying, "I've lost everything." And there's a lot of panic. There's a lot of stress. Different yeah. than I feel now. Uh, and so me and wifey talked and said, "What can we do?" Uh, and we then it just offered because I wanted to understand everyone. So that idea. Uh, and, and those conversations was that we would try to connect with everyone. Um, so I just put a post up and said, hey, free calls, 20 minutes, jump on a chat with me, we'll have, we'll have yeah. a conversation. Um, so they were for 20 minutes, but each one went for about an hour. We did about 70 of them. So I, I did the math and I talked to ATA members nonstop for seven days if we put the calls like <laughs> back to back or something yeah. silly like that. Okay. Uh, and so what I, I learned a ton. I mean, talk about silver linings. Like, if you're a business owner and you can spend that long talking to uh, your community, yeah, uh, then you're going to learn a ton anyway. Um, so I, I just found I just found that connection was invaluable at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, now everyone's kind of got used to a new norm, but everyone has adjusted. You know, as you were telling me before you pushed record, you've had to yeah. pivot. Uh, you, you, you know, still unsure what that looks like, mm-hmm. um, but we're probably uh, now that we're six months in, um, understanding that a little bit better and going to pop out the other side with some new skills, hopefully, and uh, new ways of doing business and yeah. training animals. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Are people? Are people? I would assume that industry, like so much of it, is uh, even if it's working directly with animals. Or what I've learned from some of the check on stuff is you're just as much working with the animals as you are, or sometimes even more so, working with the trainers that are working with the animals in this sort of context. Mm. So I'd assume that a lot of that's also been kind of shooken up, right? Like 
it's hard to go in and, and work in that capacity just like many of the other industries. Would that be right? Yeah, well, but people are being so uh, creative with using Zoom and, and using, and, and I think once again, learning like, oh my God, we don't have to do this in the future after coronavirus in person. We can do a lot of this via Zoom. This, yeah. this actually makes sense. The actual hands-on training, you uh, obviously you can't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, so for people that had that business structure set up, uh, it's been quite stressful. And I know some people uh, haven't been able to make the switch. Uh, some people are living with individuals who are uh, immunocompromised. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the stress on them is just, I feel, for some individuals I've talked to too much. Yeah, yeah. To, you know, and so for them it's been stressful. We can't do, and then what well, you can do, you, I was going to say you can't do group classes anymore, but you can. You just got to social distance. Mm -hmm. And then you got to manage the individual client because they might come and say, it's a, hey, this coronavirus is a hoax. I was talking to someone this morning. It's a hoax. I don't yeah. care. I'm going to come into your class. I'm not going to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of have to manage this new <laughs> uh, <laughs> element of what your clients might bring. Yeah. Uh, but then more uh, exciting uh, collaborations have come out of this. There are some big online conferences now. Uh, you know, five days nonstop. Yeah. Just event after event after event after event. I remember before coronavirus, I was like, wow, Animal Training Academy, you know, we've been doing two classes every month for four years. Like no one's ever yeah. going to have this much content. And then yeah. someone, someone's like, does an event and then they've got like twice as much content <laughs> as Animal Training Academy. I'm like, wow. So like, <laughs> It blows yeah. my mind, like just yeah, yeah. how creative and how innovative uh, and how action taking uh, people have been. Yeah. So the hands on training, of course, but but even then, like, you can have someone drop their dog to your house mm -hmm. and do some training with their dog mm -hmm. and then give it back. Um, so I, I think we're all, we're all just getting on and just doing yeah. it a different way. Okay, that's interesting. Um, it seems like, uh, so we've been recording with a number of different people across the ABA, like service delivery models, academia as well, um, different things like that. And I've been editing a lot of that, get it out here soon to people. But uh, um, it seems like a, a, a kind of a central theme of this uh, empathy for others, kind of like worry of like what's going to happen next, um, but realization of like, it's time to pivot, try to innovate, see where we can collaborate and almost just take it day by day, week by week, because you can't look out any farther than that <laughs> um, and do the best you can there. The The ABA community has seen a wealth of online content and things like that. Um, and personally for me, it's uh, interesting and it's going to be interesting to watch to see who's innovating off that, right? Like there's, there's hosting a Zoom conference uh, if you need to last minute pivot, like we saw some companies doing that. But then there's people that are pulling in like entirely different packages of like online services that I'd never seen before where I was like, this is dope. Like this has, this has some potential, right? Where it's, where it's, uh, just leveraging technology, um, in different ways. It's not taking the old model of presentation into zoom necessarily. It's saying, how can we use the technology and what people have built to deliver, well, you know, our knowledge. So it's been pretty interesting. I think that'll be one of the things that, uh, seems to be coming out of our community too, um, is, is new ways of doing things as a result. Um, the work from home model, I'm particularly interested in that. Kind of curious if that's gonna just stick around for you know, uh, larger chunks at least of people's day to day. Um, Cause it has its benefits, it has its drawbacks depending on like what you're into as well. Um, but uh, the last couple of people I've talked to, uh, I know there's a lot of big companies in the US that are just kind of like, we're going to nestle into this and get used to it for a couple couple years. Um, kind of like just, uh, I think it's a safety precaution too of like, just get people used to working productively in that environment and then figure it out in the long run. Um, but it definitely seems like it's going to shake things up for quite a while, <laughs> quite a while.